Let our republicanism so focused and so dedicated not be made fuzzy and futile by unthinking and stupid labels. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. I always think that's an appropriate way to open some segments of the program, especially when we have folks who are really uh, in a battle against uh, what you call the, uh, the, the liberal media machine, uh, the complex that has formed in this country over the last sev several decades, which always seems to be in opposition. Anytime a, a conservative Republican sneezes, uh, you immediately have the attack dogs coming out from the left and its associates and media. Uh, and including uh, an attack recently on one Idaho state legislature, legislator who, who, who had just a, an opportunity to make a post last week uh, on social media, uh, which I had done the same thing. And it was from a, a website called American Thinker about the shooting in Charlottesville, Virginia. And the suggestion was, was there potentially a conspiracy that led to all of this so that Democrats could take advantage of it? And look, the, the vice mayor of the city was encouraging leftist demonstrators to come to town and battle these folks. We're joined this morning by State Representative Brian Zollinger from Idaho Falls, and uh, he is the legislator who has been on trial by media the last several days. And First of all, welcome back to our program. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be back on. I appreciate your show and appreciate you having me on again. You, you posted this, I think, just a few minutes after I posted it last week because I saw it come up on your Facebook page within about 10 minutes. I found it at Real Clear Politics, which is a legitimate aggregator site. American Thinker is a link or as a as a website itself is not considered to be too terribly far right. It's it's obviously right of center, but it's not it's not Infowars or something like that. And you posted this, and then all of a sudden, I, I, your name when I googled it the last couple of days, you're in every major newspaper on both coasts. <laughs> it's been crazy. I'm going to blame it on you then. Maybe that's where I got the article to repost. <laughs> Uh, well, the, the fact of the matter is, when you post something like this, it's not necessarily an endorsement of the idea, but I post these things because I'm looking from, for some sort of reaction from people to get a gauge of what people are thinking. And my curiosity here is, were you doing the same? Uh, you know, not really to get a reaction out of people, but I, I occasionally post something that I think it's important people think about. In this case, what I wanted them to think about is contained in the first line of the article, it says, hey, with all the national media coverage trying to paint Trump as a racist, you know, what's the real motivation here? And so that's kind of why I posted it, just to get people to question why the mainstream media is insistent on getting rid of Trump and, and painting him as a racist and a bigot. And then immediately the attack started that you were somehow a conspiracy theorist as well, with no evidence. Yeah. Right. Conspiracy theorist, uh, bigot and racist were the big two of the last couple days that I'm a bigot and a racist because I'm asking people to, to ask questions about the national media. The real thing is, uh, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're well familiar with uh, Indivisible, and uh, the chat, there's an Idaho chapter of Indivisible Idaho, and once they pick that up nationally, they are, I think you described it perfectly in your article the other day, they're wolves, and they, they travel in packs, and, and uh, I think... Yeah, it, it's been hor just insane. And so they picked that up and ran with it. And then, uh, of course, it was selling more newspapers and more ads. So then there were follow-up articles in the state papers, and the national media picked it up. And it's all about shutting down any opposing voice. I any uh, voice that the national media doesn't want to tout, they want to shut it down. Well, I don't think national media understands that in your district uh, this can only enhance your street credibility with voters. Uh, th there seems to be uh, no understanding of how flyover country works. <laughs> None at all. And that's, that's what's made this all so, I don't want to say great, because it, it hasn't been fun, but, uh, you know, it's, it's made a, a positive. The people of Idaho have turned this into a positive, uh, donating to my campaign for every hate speech, hate email that I've gotten. The problem at this point is keeping track of how many they are. Uh, I mean, there have been thousands of hate emails, and they're all... The same two lines. How dare you question President Obama and uh, you racist bigot? And so the people of Idaho have made this just just amazing with their support. And uh, fortunately, I don't think the hate has spread in Idaho. 
quite as bad as it has other places. Uh, it's less than a handful of rotten emails that I've got from Idahoans. Most of these are coming from out of state. People who actually see a headline, I think in some cases, don't even read the entire story and just send off a response. That, that's exactly right. I would say you're, it's the majority. And I was answering maybe a phone call or two an hour just for fun, just to talk to people. And they would all start out with the same line that, uh, you accused Obama of being part of this, and I would just calmly say, no. <laughs> I raised a question. I said, what if? And, and most of the discussions we calmed down, and they hadn't read the article. They hadn't read the original article. They just read a headline or an email they got from their indivisible leaders and said, hey, shut this down. Here's an opposing view. We can't have opposing views in society. It's the same reason they're trying to get rid of all the statues. They do not want people to remember how great this country is and the freedoms we have. They want to shut down free speech, and they want us to forget our history. Our guest is State Representative Brian Zollinger from Idaho Falls, joining us this morning on Top Story. It's 71. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. The Spokesman Review tried to refer to the American Thinker as being some sort of uh, knuckle dragging racist publication. Uh, American Thinker, though, be- the, the fact that Real Clear Politics links to it frequently uh, would tell me that it is a highly respected conservative voice when it comes to. Uh, the name Thinker, uh, I think, sp- explains it all. And so it, it seems that media itself, which claims it isn't biased, is showing its stripes now with this. Yeah, no no doubt. And that explains a lot where uh, I hadn't read the Spokesman's Review article, but uh, if they used the term knuckle-dragger, I got a lot of knuckle-dragging text. So <laughs> that might have been <laughs> my, my, my choice of words. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, no, you're exactly right. The mainstream media is so out of touch with the, the, the people, and especially the people of Idaho and, and the mainstream country. Um, they have no idea what people are thinking because I've picked up countless number of friends through this from all over the country, which has also been amazing, just people contacting me, telling, telling me to stick with it. They wish their representatives would do this or, or giving me names of other representatives across the country that – we should start cooperating with um, to to spread these and to get the word out there. And just in opposition to the mainstream media. That's why I think shows like yours are so important. People need to listen to shows like yours and talk radio around the state because it gives an opposing viewpoint to the narrative that the national media wants to sell us, that Donald Trump is a racist. And, and really, I mean, what is their motivation? Why are they trying to further divide the country, which is exactly what they're trying to do? Now the latest, uh, you know, when when they found they couldn't get under your skin by calling you those names, uh, the latest is they're angry that you're fundraising off this, and now they're saying, well, he can't possibly be raising money uh, by doing this. Uh, so it just they they it's one one didn't work, so they shifted and they moved on to the next page. <laughs> That's right, and uh, I think that uh, kind of, like I said in my my follow up Facebook post, I'm only emboldened by this this outcry. And it's only intensified my desire to protect the liberties that we have. Um, uh, we are not going to be silent, and we're going to protect and restore the liberties we have in this country. And, uh, you know, people would only understand that true happiness comes from freedom. I read a book the other month, and it was from a Harvard study, nonetheless, that said what really motivates people, and it was a book about rethinking motivation, is freedom, the freedom of choice. And so it's sad to me that these people want equality, and all these things, which are great words, but what really brings happiness is freedom. That's why we're not backing away from our message. Um, we're going to protect and let's restore liberty. And it's interesting how they've twisted this. You're right on the fundraising. I had a good friend that said, look, let's, let's turn this into a positive. I'm going to donate. And he originally said a dollar for every hate mail tweet. And I joked and said you'd be maxed out in an hour. Uh, you'll hit that $1,000 max in one hour. And so we reduced it quite a bit. But then I've had... Uh, a handful of others come in and say they'll match it. Uh, some of those are publicly on Facebook. Um, others have just called and texted me. But uh, we've really turned it into a positive, and that's really a uh, red meat to the wolves because they're now saying I'm profiting off uh, the death, which is just, just horrible. I condemn the KKK, racist, white supremacist group like anybody else, Antifa, the violence. I, I you know, I decry all of it, but... Uh, and I'm not making money off that. I'm, I'm trying to turn hate into something positive. 
We've got a caller. If you don't mind, we'll take a call or two uh, while you're joining us. Um, yeah, see, love to. See what the input is. A caller, you're up caller next. Uh, you got to turn the radio down in the background, but what's your question for the representative? Hi. Uh, I'd like to mention that President Trump employed hundreds of black union construction workers and hotel workers that resulted in blacks having that really were able to buy houses and have better lifestyles. How many black union workers did Schumer employ? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice comment. In fact, it does tell you that media doesn't like to uh, give you a lot about uh, those stories about the background of Donald Trump, uh, and and so it would it would affect their narrative. It, it would. The caller raised an excellent point. You look at Donald Trump; he was in the national spotlight for 20 years, and you never heard these claims um, until he was running for president. And then all of a sudden, he's racist. And there's several examples in his lifetime. You look at what he did in Florida with Key Largo; these clubs that were closed to blacks at the time that Donald Trump took over. And he took it to the city council and got, got the regulations on clubs changed to allow for it. I mean, the man's been a, a, a racial warrior, if anything, for equality. We've got, we've got to run in a minute or so, Brian. But uh, for, since we're talking about people contributing to your campaign, uh, the question is, how do they go about and do that? The easiest way, and all my information is public. I mean, I even put my cell phone out there because I want people to contact me. They can call me if they need any information. But my website is ZollingerForIdaho.com. That's just Zollinger, F-O-R, Idaho.com. And there's a link on there. They can do it through PayPal. They can send me a, a check uh, all made out to Zollinger for Idaho. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, we'll gear up for the fight in the, in the fall because I'm sure we're going to have uh, <laughs> a lot of people are saying they're going to contribute against me to the Democrats. So I'd appreciate anything people can do. And there's only about 14 Democrats in Idaho Falls. This could get very exciting. It could be. <laughs> we, we should point out quickly before we do run, uh, you are one of the leaders of the new Liberty Caucus in Boise, which is modeled after the Liberty Caucus uh, in the House of Representatives in Washington. Uh, and one more reason maybe to keep you there in the uh, in the uh, working in state government. I appreciate that, Bill. I, You know, we modeled it after Representative Labrador and everything he's done there with the Freedom Caucus, and we hope to accomplish much the same here in Idaho. So thank you. Hey, good luck on this one. I'm sure that it'll blow over sooner or later, but I hope you bring in a lot of money before that happens. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for having me on, Bill. Take care. You too, sir. Brian Zollinger joining us this morning, state representative from Idaho Falls, uh, discussing his trial by media and what has ensued since then and how he has turned uh, the negative into a positive, which only makes the leftists in the newsrooms around the country even angrier, uh, which is probably a good thing because... If they can't manage their anger, they may eventually have to just go off and live in some sort of retirement home and get out of our way. Uh, it's 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. We've got more coming up. Hey, speaking of the president's remarks last night, a couple of more points uh, to be made about that in just a few minutes on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 68 this morning on the way to 83.